<laughs> Hello, first of all, thank you. That was really interesting to watch and really insightful. My question was around Project December. Something that really stuck with me was them kind of feeling like lost ghosts, the deceased people that were speaking to. So I wondered if any of your participants brought that conversation to a close or if you got any insight into how you do say goodbye if you do want to stop. Because when the AI ethicist was saying about putting a price point on pain, I was like, whoa, like, how do you say goodbye and say close and actually don't wait, don't go and feel like you have to continuously keep paying for these services? Yeah, that's a very good question. And that's uh, one of the big problems, I would say, because these businesses are um, built in exactly that way. Uh, uh, because most of the people we spoke to, they really want to find closure. They like to have the last conversation. Maybe they had like they hadn't had the chance because of the sudden death to to ask that last question or to to solve that conflict. And the machines are built in the opposite way. They try to ask new questions. They try to um, keep the conversation going all the time. So it's very hard to find closure with that kind of uh, systems because that's the business model of them. They try to involve you and interact um, again and again and again uh, so that you're paying more money and more money. So that's really, really the downside. And um, they are looking for closure and they're finding the opposite of that. So that's a big, big problem. And then they are not dissimilar to a. It's not dissimilar to a sex chat um, platform, in, in in that way, that you you're gonna have to keep on playing, and paying, paying to play, but uh, as the um, your MIT uh, woman put it uh, quite well. Um, this AI model is taking the place of religion, where people would have found solace in religion. Some of these people are obviously very, very religious, but I like the fact that their families were arguing with them um, and are trying to rationalize with them about what they were actually doing. Um, I personally didn't have an issue with the Korean lady and the VR, although, I mean, it was exploitative in that it was a television program, but so I thought it seemed to me that she knew what she was doing and she wanted a last moment with her daughter. She wasn't going to carry on going back to that. It's not really a question, it's just a comment. But um, I liked your MIT lady. I thought it was amazing. Brilliant film. Thank yeah. you so much. I have a question. Uh, thank you so much for the film. It's amazing. Um, you show how the CEO of OpenAI kind of sits in front of the court very similarly to how Mark Zuckerberg at some point is not there and just how all these entrepreneurs, they're so inspired by this new idea and the industry seems to be like blossoming. I was in LA like six years ago and the first time I heard it, it was like n nuisance. But in this film, it's like everywhere already. So it feels, again, like social media, this like unstoppable force in terms of where it's going, like it's gonna keep progressing and it's gonna be more of it. I do, I'm just curious, like after working for six years on the subject, like what is your stance? Are you like optimistic, pessimistic about all of this? Like where, where is this going? Shall I end the evening in a good way or <laughs> in a bad way? <laughs> so, of course, I mean, that's why we are doing these films to, in order to have like a discussion before the big disaster <laughs> is coming. Uh, and we are very much looking forward to present the film also to the policymakers and to a political level. For example, um, we screened our first film in the EU Parliament and it was very helpful for them to see, ah, okay, that's what is it about. And it's way easier to find regulations for these kinds of tools when you have an idea how is it working. Um, and I hope that they find ways to regulate these services because they are dangerous in a way and that's why we included these, this example that there was a young man talking to a large language model and he was suicidal and in order to help that the machine was helping him 
uh, he was forcing me into the suicide and he committed suicide at the end. And of course, that's a very uh, drastic uh, example, but it, it, it makes it sure. What is it about? Who is responsible for this, for this suicide in the end? And that's a big question uh, uh, for the politicians because at the moment all these um, developers, they say it's not us uh, doing that thing. It's like the black box. It's like the machine. Uh, so we are not responsible for that. But I think uh, I'm, I'm totally with Karl Ullmann, who puts it very well in our film. It's like the same with self-driving cars. You wouldn't put a self-driving car on the street. If it kills 10 people, you wouldn't say, oh, it's just the generative AI. I, I'm, not, I'm not responsible for that. Of course, the company is building that cars is responsible for that. So I hope that there are some more concrete and effectful regulations in future in order to have like not a disaster. <laughs> Okay, we have time for one last question, and yeah, I saw the lady. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, but I think it might be a good last question. Um, first, uh, congratulations. I think it was a great film. And we just talked about uh, your, your film ends with your protagonist sort of finding closure for a moment, and then she she is becoming more curious again, and is like, well, maybe I'm going to keep chatting. And that sort of creates that moment that we just talked about, this weird loop where you want to keep going. And I'm just wondering, uh, since your film has finished shooting, and uh, if there's anything, like, do you know if she still is, is, she, is she still typing with, with her deceased husband? And if, if maybe there's been other developments with your other protagonists that might be worth mentioning that happened in the meantime? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, very good question. Of course, we are in contact with all of our protagonists um, after we we stopped shooting, um, and that's why we decided to to have like the moment with Christy as our last scene because it's like a, a sad and happy moment at the same time. Because in a way, we felt happy that he was. It was a relief for her to hear that he's not in hell, and we we could see that it means so much to her to to make sure that he's in a good place. And at the same time, as you mentioned, oh no, now she's continue speaking with him, and what's the next mistake, and what's the next uh, uh, sad story that's coming up? Um, uh, and yeah, she is, she is continue speaking to him, and sometimes if she's not feeling good, she, she opens Project December, and she continues chatting with him. And just uh, the question of time when the next sad moment will appear. Okay. One more question, actually, so, so the lady can actually maybe receive the microphone. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. I loved your film. It's really, really interesting and wonderful. It asks, makes me want to get more information. And I believe Sam Altman quit doing AI, and then he went back to it. And I was curious if, which country do you think has the most uh, responsibility for regulation? And, my sec and the uh, second part of that was, are there any other technologies out there that are doing this, but in a different way? Like I know that they were talking about sending your footprint to Mars. I think it was one of Elon Musk's companies or something. Anyway, that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's no no secret that Europe is much more restrictive with uh, data policy than the U.S., for example. And most of the company have like their, their base in the U.S. Uh, because they are handling it very differently than we in Europe are doing it. Um, um, after we finished the film, a couple of more companies um, popping up, and there was one company which I found personally much more interesting and, and ethically correct in a way, because they created kind of a digital, um, digital room where you can um, match together and grieve together. Because I think that's one of the big problems in our society right now is that we have a, a big loneliness crisis all over the place, and we are living in global, in, in, a, in a globalized world. So it's it's not that easy to go to a local cemetery and to grieve uh, because you're like thousands of kilometers away, for example, or you are not in contact with your family anymore. And I think we need to find new ideas how to deal with death in a good way because we. 
um, we need to bring back the death into the life and we need to discuss that and we need to make sure that this is part of our life. And I'm pretty sure that there will be in future some of these services which are doing a much better job than the, the ones we're presenting in our film. That's what I'm hoping. Thank you very much. Thank you.